Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at the definition of a natural logarithm function, explore its derivative, and look at an example of logarithmic differentiation. We're going to refer to the previous video in which we reviewed logarithms, so be prepared for one or two references to that previous video. Now, when you do calculus, the exponential logarithm of choice are those to base b equals e. Encountered e before, and we've studied the exponential function e to the x in its logarithm. We like to work with e to the x because of all the exponentials it has the simplest derivative. In fact, as we saw earlier, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And as you will see in your My Math Lab homework and other sources, when you take the derivative of something to a different base like 5 to the x, you're going to find the answer there is the log of 5 times 5 to the x. That is the natural log. So this derivative is a little bit more complicated than this one, so we tend to work with this one in calculus because it's so simple. So the function e to the x is called the exponential function, and its inverse so we'll call that g inverse of x is the log to the base e of x, and that is normally written as just ln of x. Again, it's used so much you want a convenient short notation. ln of x, and this is called the natural logarithm of x. So we'll go back and look at our logarithm relationships in the previous uh, or earlier in the video and replace the b by e, we see the two important relations linking these two functions are that e to the log of x is x. This first one is true. By the way, as long as x is bigger than 0, we cannot take the logarithm of a negative number. And of course, the output to the exponential is always positive. So this is good for x positive. This other one, log base c e to the x, is true for all real numbers x. And you really should know these. They'll uh, be very useful in simplifying calculations later on. In fact, we'll use them though, these uh, later on in, in the video. So here's the graph of the exponential y equals e to the x and the inverse function, the natural logarithm, found by reflecting the graph about the line y equals x. And again, as we saw earlier, you know, because e is about 2.71, of course, this is bigger than 1. This is like the 5 to the x case. The exponential increases as we move to the right, as does the logarithm. And we can see here, as we approach x from the positive side, the logarithm of x approaches minus infinity. Now, let's take a look at the derivative of the logarithm function. We can do this by going back to chapter or the uh, previous section and using the formula for the inverse of or the derivative of an inverse. But we can also find this by just differentiating this relationship e to the log x equals x. So we've written that here again, just swap sides on the equal sign. So we're going to do this by differentiating both sides with respect to x, as we see there. So the derivative with respect to x of x will be the derivative with respect to x of e to the log x. This derivative on the left here is, is very easy. Of course, it just becomes 1. And on the right, we have to use the chain rule because this is the function composed with the logarithm. So by the chain rule, we differentiate the exponential first. That gives us e to the log x. And then we differentiate what we put into the exponential. That was the log of x. Remember, we're trying to find the derivative of the logarithm. And so this is a nice thing to see right here. In fact, we're going to solve for that quantity right now. So if I isolate the derivative of the logarithm, d dx of log x, all I have to do is divide by e to the log x, rather. And that gave us that down there. And now. We see e to the log x here again. Here's why you want to know these relationships. As we saw earlier, 
that's that defining relationship, so to speak, e to the log x is x. And so this calculation boils down to 1 over x. So we now have the logarithm, really kind of a complicated function when you think about all that goes into defining it, but it has a very simple derivative. The derivative of log of x with respect to x is 1 over x. We'll finish with a couple of examples. Easy one first. Uh, let's calculate the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of cosine of t. So when I recognize first this is a composition of two functions. It's the natural log function composed with the cosine. Given t, we compute cosine t, put that answer into the logarithm. Now we can express this as a composition chain. Maybe we like to work from the outside in. The last thing we do here is take a logarithm. So we're going to think of y equals log of u, and then the u is cosine t. And so this breaks the composition apart for us. And our chain rule says if once we have a composition chain like this describing a function, we can compute the derivative dy dt we want by differentiating each line of this expression. So y equals log u, we want to find dy du, derivative of y with respect to u, and then du dt, derivative of u with respect to t. And because y equals log u, that derivative is just 1 over u. Just derive that derivative. It is cosine t, we differentiate the cosine in earlier sections, it has derivative of minus sine. Now finally change the u back to what it was in the beginning, cos and t, and our derivative simplifies to minus tangent of t. So the derivative of log of cos and t is minus tangent of t. And this illustrates the general chain rule for the natural logarithm, again probably worth remembering, that if u is a function of x, then the derivative of log of u of x with respect to x, or d dx of log of u of x, is simply u prime of x over u of x. The 1 over u of x is the derivative of the log function. The u prime is the derivative of the function that you're composing with the logarithm function. So last example, we'll see how logarithms can help us to do derivatives of functions like this. There's no logarithms in this function but the fact that it's made up of quotients and exponentials and products uh, means there is a way to use logarithms to make the differentiation process a little easier. Of course, you could already do this with rules you learned earlier because you could, you could use the product quotient and power rules or, and chain rule if you wanted to. But we're going to instead see how taking logarithms of both sides can actually lessen the work a little bit. This technique is called logarithmic differentiation. So good thing to keep in mind because again it can cut down your work now and then. So we're going to find dy dx but we're going to start by just taking the logarithm of both sides as we've done in this line here. Now we're going to use the rules of logarithms. I assume you know those from your pre-calculus course. Log of a sum is the sum of logs and log of a quotient is a difference of logs. And so we've used that in this line up here by taking this product and writing that as a sum. And the quotient comes out as the logarithm of a difference. And we do one last rule of logarithms, that is the one that allows you to bring exponents out in front. So uh, the cube root of x cubed plus 2x is x cubed plus 2x to the one-third power. So here we bring the one-third power out in front by the exponential rule of logarithms. And over here we have the exponent of 2x. It comes out in front of the logarithm. And we're left with the log of 5. Can't do much with the last expression there. Okay, so we've now just done some algebra, mainly work with logarithms. We'll now take the derivative with respect to x on both sides. Keep in mind that y is a function of x. I want to think of y equals y of x. So when we 
do the derivative of log of y, we have to use the chain rule for logarithms. And doing this, we get the following. So by our chain rule for logarithms, we saw there, log of something like u becomes u prime over u, so log of y differentiates to y prime over y. We just use this rule again in the next step. We have the one-third in front, and the log of x cubed plus 2x becomes x cubed plus 2x prime over x cubed plus 2x. This next expression, uh, this is a little different. Log of 5 is just a number. It's a constant. So we're going to think of 2x log 5 of x down here as the number twice log of 5 times x. We've differentiated constant times x before, and so that's why the derivative of this expression just turns out to be twice log 5. And then again, we have an example of the u prime over u rule in differentiating this expression. And then our last, our second line here, we just do these two derivatives in these numerators up here to get 3x squared plus 2 for the derivative of x prime plus 2x, and 2 plus cosine x for the derivative of 2x plus sine x. Now remember, the goal is to get y prime. So we're going to now solve for y prime by simply multiplying both sides of this last expression by y. And there we see it. So y prime, or dy dx, is, and here's the multiplication by y, right there, times this thing. And then if we want to return to the original variable, we say, well, see, what was y to begin with? Well, there it is. Go back to the problem. And we've replaced that y by that expression down here. And here is our rather impressive looking expression for dy dx for the y given up there. OK, so you should practice this on your own. And uh, good luck with it.